The FBI seized the phones of two Trump aides and issued 40 subpoenas as the Justice Department intensifies its various investigations of Donald Trump and his allies, including my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, whose phone was also seized by the FBI. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. It's genuinely becoming very difficult for me to keep track of all the investigations into Donald Trump and his allies. For example, one of his closest associates, Steve Bannon, was just indicted for, I don't know, like the 18th time? The only way I'm able to keep track is that he wears a new layer of clothing for every time he's been arrested. <laughs> it's like how you can tell how old a tree is by the number of rings it has. By the time he actually ends up going to prison, he's gonna look like this. And then we found out Trump's fundraising activities were also under investigation for potential fraud. Blockbuster reporting from the New York Times that the Justice Department's January 6th investigation is expanding. Quote, a federal grand jury has issued subpoenas seeking information about Save America PAC, which was formed as former President Trump promoted baseless assertions about election fraud. As a reminder, Trump created the Save America PAC after he lost the 2020 election. He raised millions of dollars by falsely claiming that there was rampant voter fraud that had to be stopped. And according to the January 6th committee, Trump and his surrogates misled donors about what their PAC donations would ultimately be used for. You mean to tell me Donald Trump has amassed a giant pile of money and it might not entirely be above board? <laughs> Next, you're gonna tell me Chris Pine wasn't thrilled to be at the Venice Film Festival. <laughs> And in particular, what seems to have attracted the attention of the feds in Trump's case is that he seems, and I know this will come as a shock, to have lied to his supporters to get their money. Much of the money Trump has amassed was raised in the days and weeks after the 2020 election. That's when Trump's supporters were bombarded with a nonstop stream of emails and texts, many containing all caps lettering and blatant lies about a stolen 2020 election soliciting cash for an election defense fund, but no such fund ever existed. Instead, Trump has dedicated the money to other uses, He's financed dozens of rallies, paid staff, and used the money to travel as he's teased an expected 2024 presidential run. Although, let me stress, I think most people who donate money to Trump would do it no matter what he said it was for. <laughs> I don't know why he opened himself up to criminal liability by lying and saying it was for a legal fund when he could have just raised as much from telling his supporters, I'm upset, and the only thing that cheers me up is money. <laughs> or going on a fancy plane ride tomorrow. Want to pay for it? So, those are just a few of the newest revelations we've learned about recently. And as I said earlier, it's getting hard to keep track of all of Trump's criminal investigations. I mean, I don't even think I could list them all here if I tried, which is a shame because people should know about all of them, given that the Republican Party and so many of its midterm candidates are standing firmly behind Trump. I just wish someone would put all the Trump scandals into, I don't know, one giant list so we could get a sense of Trump's corruption. I mean, maybe some young hotshot journalist had said on, taken down the former president and the whole conservative establishment. Maybe someone like this man. First it was the Russia hoax, then it was Comey's crossfire hurricane, Mueller's witch hunt, the emoluments clause investigation from the House Oversight Committee, a House Ways and Means investigation into Trump's taxes, another House investigation into Trump's hotel lease, another House investigation into foreign gift disclosures, a D.C. probe into Trump's inauguration fundraising, another similar investigation from the Southern District of New York and the Eastern District of New York and from New Jersey's attorney. Attorney General. One impeachment investigation into a regular phone call with Ukraine, a second impeachment investigation into January 6th, yet another House committee investigation into January 6th. That is still ongoing with more hearings to come. And then there's the Southern District of New York's investigation into pardons, a DOJ probe into Trump's political action committee, another House investigation into the Trump administration's security clearance process, other investigations into Trump's Trump's property valuations, and of course, his social media, Truth Social, the Trump Foundation, as well as a variety of other tax investigations, and of course, the National Archives investigation that led to the Mar-a-Lago raid. You got all that? Mar-a-Lago raid. I do now. I got it all now. <laughs> also, those weren't his hats. 
Seriously, was that list supposed to make anyone other than Donald Trump look bad? It's like a reverse resume where you list all the reasons you've been fired from previous jobs. Uh, special skills? Let's see. I'm often late. I steal office supplies. I ask coworkers on dates and won't take no for an answer. I treat every day like casual Friday and every Friday like underpants Sunday. And when I'm giving feedback on my work, I have been known to pull a knife. And now I have a question for you. Uh, when do I start? Don't make me pull my knife! <laughs> yeah, somehow, as of today, there is still yet more to add to that list. Because in addition to the House hearings into January 6th, there are multiple criminal investigations, including multiple federal grand juries that we know of. And now, one of those investigations has taken yet another extraordinary step by seizing the phones of two Trump aides and issuing a flurry of subpoenas. The Times reports Justice Department officials have seized the phones of two top advisors to former President Donald J. Trump and blanketed his aides with about 40 subpoenas and a substantial escalation of the investigation into his efforts to subvert the 2020 election. People familiar with the inquiry said on Monday, the seizure of the phones coupled with a widening effort to obtain information from those around Mr. Trump after the 2020 election represent some of the most aggressive steps the department has taken thus far in its criminal investigation into the actions that led to the January 6, 2021 assault on the Capitol by a pro-Trump mob. 40 subpoenas. Next time Hannity does his list of Trump investigations, he's not even going to be able to get to all of them. He's just going to have to read every fourth entry as it scrolls by and call it now, that's what I call a Trump criminal investigation. <laughs> or jerk jams. <laughs> Feel like one of those. <laughs> and by the way, those are just the investigations and subpoenas that are directly related to Trump's personal actions to overturn the election. Then there are the satellite figures floating in his orbit who tried to help out in their own ways and now face their own legal trouble, like my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell. And again, I always feel like I need to clear this up. The name of his company is My Pillow. He's not My Pillow CEO. <laughs> my Pillow CEO is a guy named David Rosenbaum, who does a fantastic job. <laughs> Started with 15 pillows, I think we're up to like 19, 20. <laughs> and before we get to the Lindell news, I also think it's worth pausing to reflect on the fact that one of the president's closest outside aides and advisors was a guy who sells <laughs> pillows. That in itself is not a good sign. President Obama literally had a Nobel laureate in his cabinet. I don't remember Obama ever taking the mic at a press conference and saying, and uh, now I'd like to introduce the man who will be uh, spearheading our national infrastructure plan, the uh, ShamWow guy. <laughs> now, Lindell, of course, already posted about this story online, as you might expect, and just as entertaining as the news itself is the location where it happened. Uh, today, the FBI uh, you're going to hear this, and you're probably already hearing it in the news. The FBI came after me and took my phone. They surrounded me at a Hardee's and uh, took my phone. I run all my business, everything with. Um, um, they could have just, what we've done is weaponize the FBI. Um, it's disgusting. I don't have a computer. Everything I do have that phone, everything was on there. And, uh, um, and they told me not to tell anybody. Here's an order not to, don't tell anybody, okay, I won't. <laughs> well, I am. So, there you go. It's so fitting that they stopped Lindell at a Hardee's because when you think of it, Hardee's would be a more accurate name for my pillow. <laughs> and to be clear, Lindell says it was at the drive through at a Hardee's near Mankato, Minnesota. It's just so perfect. I think if someone told you, hey, they seized Mike Lindell's cell phone, your brain would just auto-complete the sentence with at a Mankato Hardee's. It's, <laughs> it's also great because Lindell's regular speaking volume is everybody else's ordering at a drive through volume. <laughs> they surrounded me at a Hardee's, and at first I thought they were going to take my order. So I said, OK, I'll have 97 orders of biscuits, but then they told me they were with the FBI. And I said, does that stand for federal biscuit inspectors? And they said, that's not a thing. And I said, well, it should be because sometimes the biscuits are too dry. And they said, don't tell anybody. And I showed them that. And that's not the one. Where would the thing go? I don't have a computer. I also. 
I also love to imagine Lindell only eats at restaurants in towns that are fun to say in his voice. Where you guys want to go eat? We could go to the Hardee's in Mankato or the Arby's in Owatonna or maybe the Jack in the Box in Oconomowoc. So that's Lindell's side of the story. Although, if you want to hear more of it, you'll apparently have to tune into a network other than Fox News because when they reported on this story last night, they briefly played a clip of Lindell explaining the situation just before cutting him off. FBI agents located him, questioned him, showed him their badges, and asked him questions about Colorado and Dominion voting machines, and then provided him with a warrant to seize his cell phone. And uh, he says, uh, we're FBI. I said, show me your badges. So they show one badge. I said, how about yours? You know, I'm, I, you know cause I don't trust anybody. Like, you know, there's bad people. Well, they do that, and they said, what do you want? And, and uh, he says, we need to talk to you. So I pull over, and... Uh, Mike Lindell said he initially told those agents he would not surrender his phone because he does not have a computer and runs all of his businesses off of that phone. Where's my camera? Over here? Okay, ready to go with my story about the FBI. We're filming this in my office, so I think I know where the camera is. They just cut him off the way you hang up on your grandpa over FaceTime. Hi. Hi, Grandpa. I heard you met a friend today. What did he say? He says, uh, we're FBI. I said, show me your badges. So they show one bad, I said, how about yours? You know, I'm, I, you know, I don't trust anybody. Like, you know, there's bad people. Well, they do that and they said, what do you want? And, and uh, he says, we need to talk to you. So I pull over. Okay, Grandpa, gotta go. The FBI is seizing my phone, bye. <laughs> Although my favorite part of the Fox News coverage came earlier when Fox host Tucker Carlson introduced the news in a very solemn tone, but also for some reason threw in a dig at Lindell. This is a Fox News alert and a shocking one. We told you last night that the Biden administration has politicized law enforcement to the point where it feels Soviet, and we were not overstating it. The FBI has just raided the guy who sells pillows on this channel, not because the pillows were bad, but because they don't like who we voted for. I love how he makes it sound like he would have been totally fine with it if they had raided Lindell because his pillows were bad. Way to be a pal. If you're gonna raid this truth-telling, democracy-loving patriot for anything, let it be for how criminally uncomfortable <laughs> his <laughs> ass pillows are. Hey, Tucker, I'm standing right here. As midterm election season intensifies, Republican candidates across the country made it clear that they are not only okay with, but actively supportive of Trump's corruption and his attempts to dismantle democracy, which is why it's so important the Justice Department follow every lead and investigate every accomplice. Even if it's just three guys or four guys or five guys, they have to follow the dominoes, even <laughs> if they lead all the way to... Parties. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a closer look. The midterm elections are coming up, so to make sure that you're good to vote in this election, visit our good friends at headcount.org to check your voter registration status or to register to vote.